ladies, this is it. First official camp in the new trailer. Come a long way. This time. Let's go see what it's all about. We got a winter rise too though. That's right, it it's is. Cold. Oh, freezing eating out there. I was not expecting it to be that chilly. Hi. What do you think of this spot? Will this work? Isn't it pretty? <laughs> all right, well in true lifestyle overland fashion, the last camp wasn't good enough, so we had to hunt just a little bit more, and I'm glad we did. There's an amazing view on the other side of this trailer. But first, I gotta get camp set up so the girls can get all warm and toasty. In the last episode, we picked up our brand new Voyager trailer by Expedition Trailers in Salt Lake and then frantically traveled to a couple of events with a temporary tent on the roof. Now we've jettisoned the leaky Roof Nest Falcon Pro for something with a bit more square footage and quality. Say hello to the Bush Company TX27 Max. Really? That's satisfying to me. As you probably know, we've used many different tents over the years with a lot of cool features and formats. But this is the first one with not one, but two wedge pop-ups. And with their powers combined, the net result is a literal sky cabin for Caroline. We'll be putting together a full walkthrough of this tent and trailer in the future. But for now, we're slowing down for a couple of days and just soaking in this new trailer experience. Honestly, I'm still learning the best sequence for setting everything up since this is the very first time we've camped with the new tent and awning installed. So I want to get a proper feel for everything before I dig into the details with you. I go! <gasps> but for now, suffice it to say that the one thing that stood out to me during this setup was the quality of the aluminum framing, welds, double canvas walls, stitching, and the little details that often get overlooked by the tents made in China. After our initial setup, I was quickly coming to appreciate the difference in South African built camping equipment and I was pretty excited about putting this through its paces. While we were at it, we also added this Bush Company 270 XT Max awning, which not only extends towards the storage area, but also swings out and covers the entire kitchen area too. You can see since this is uphill, but this is still so tall, it's just loads of room. Yeah. <laughs> so happy. How's it going up there? Oh, I thought you were taking fish. Oh, <laughs> uh, good. Yeah, is it cozy? Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got all set up for camp, and then the storms rolled in. So, blustery, cold. We were gonna cook steak to inaugurate our first night, but that didn't work out. So we've been taking turns holding up here in the cabin. Sarah's putting together some quick sandwiches. Yeah, we've gotten to iPad level entertainment. Sometimes you just have to, you know, throw a little digital action into the mix. What's funny is this game is actually a game that Caroline played when she was the same age and is still around and she loves it. She's actually starting to imitate the animals just a little bit. But not to mention the fact it's nice and toasty in here. Is it almost time for food? Almost time for food. How's it going up there? Nice. Yeah? You feel that heat coming up? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What did you make? <laughs> I was going to make steak and uh -huh. potatoes and green beans, but you know, time and weather had other plans for us so yeah. quick lunch 
I mean, quick dinner. Quick dinner, Mom. whatever it is. Yeah. Look at us. <sighs> oh, cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hmm. Good morning. I don't know. It is massive. That is crazy. Looks like a rock. Sticky. Yeah, wash your hands after that. Okay. <laughs> the button. <laughs> it's got an actual button, not a fancy touch screen like your tablet. There you go. And that uses very little water that way. Hi. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> After a peaceful night of sleep in our toasty, quiet cabin, we lazily emerged and did something we haven't done in a very long time, simply soaked in the surrounding beauty. Truthfully, this year has been far busier than we ever expected, with welcoming a new baby to the family, setting the goal of attending all four Overland Expos, doing our best to carve out time to travel and film our own adventures, along with all the behind-the-scenes business efforts to keep the dream alive. So, for the next couple of days, we committed to a slower pace to give us some time to really dig into this new camping setup and fully appreciate all the features and fun ideas that were incorporated. It wasn't long before our bellies were growling, but first, we decided to kick the day off right with some of our very own Topo Brew coffee, which, if I do say so myself, is some of the best coffee we've ever had. And apparently, we're not the only ones who feel that way, because thanks to many of you, we can barely keep it in stock. Today, we'll be sipping our new dark roast that we've lovingly named Campfire, which should pair perfectly with what we decided to whip up for breakfast. It's so fast. <laughs> Does it need a preheater on it for your little hands? Yeah, probably for me it does. Here, close your toes. Ready? I like to stir it first. Like put a little bit of water in and let it steep for a second. Because I noticed last time when you made coffee, there were like dry bits. Really? So it clumped together then? Yeah. I got in a hurry. You did. That's My okay bad. though. My bad. So... Okay. Now that it's like kind of all combined yeah. and bloomed. Yeah, let's do it. Now we'll add some more. Get it. All right, so you might notice that things have changed in the uh, fire pit world. We've gone to the square, smaller fire pit. And that's just because it fits so much better in the utility area of the trailer. But one thing I assumed was that 
this big skillet would just rest on the edges and it's just this much. Yeah, just this much. Too small, so I grabbed some rocks from nearby just to give it something to rest on. But since we didn't get to cook a nice meal for dinner last night, we're gonna have a nice meal for breakfast this morning. So let's try this one more again. And the trick for cooking this close to the burner is to take that valve and turn it towards off. Low is way too much. So you just want to finesse the valve to where it's almost off. Bet you can't guess what we're having. I want to float like a bird, slow and low. Won't follow the river wherever it goes. I want the wheels of time to jump the track. I want to leave all my troubles and not look back. I want to close my eyes and forget my sorrows. I don't care if the devil takes tomorrow Ashes to ashes if I must I want to leave all my troubles dust to dust Trouble in the schoolyard Trouble in the park Trouble in the courthouse Trouble in my heart Trouble on the corner Trouble on the line Trouble, trouble, trouble on my mind I want to sleep under the stars and fade away Let the wind take my memories down I want to find the music, find the light Help me dance away the heartache in the moonlight Trouble in the schoolyard, trouble in the park Trouble in the courthouse, trouble in my heart Trouble on the corner Trouble on the line Trouble, trouble, trouble on my mind After our delicious ribeye and egg breakfast, we took a walk to explore the area, but it wasn't long before some big storms began brewing on the horizon, and we decided it was time to hit the trail to begin our search for another epic camp. Thankfully, we found this new configuration to be quite the speedy combination for breaking down camp, and having hot water on demand made cleaning up the dishes much more enjoyable for Sarah, too. Even with us taking our time and trying a few different packing sequences for putting our gear away, we were ready to roll long before the storm could catch us.
quick little stop for a diaper change, maybe some lunch. Plenty of leftover ribeye from breakfast, so I'll be partaking of that. But this, this is a nice camp spot. I'm gonna have to remember this one. Got the little river going here. It's right on the main road, which is not usually a big attraction for us, but it does have a pit toilet for those of you who are interested. GPS waypoints are available at lso.link forward slash support. More bites? Yes, please. Get it. More. More. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so something else new that we haven't really talked about yet is our mobile mount Starlink. So this is by Star Mount and what we did is a flat conversion. So we had to cut up our existing Starlink, put it in this case, and then we also did a 12 volt conversion. So there's no need to run an inverter for 120 volt power. It even has its own built-in router right in that system. Now the nice part is I can take these two bolts out right here and move it to where it's got a clear view of the sky just to improve our connectivity. But it's kind of crazy to be driving down the trail and have full connectivity out here for the most part, unless the tree cover just gets too thick, but I'll take it. Well, folks, that's all we have time for today. But be sure and tune back in next week as we push through some tight, lesser traveled trails and discover one of the most epic camps we've seen yet. We might even run into some unexpected trouble. On behalf of Sarah, Caroline, Abigail, and myself, Kevin, thank you so much for riding along with us. Be sure and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell to be notified of our next adventure. We'd also like to hear from you down in the comments. All your interactions mean the world to us. But hey, if you really enjoy what we do, then we would love to have you join us and these fine folks you see here on Patreon for ad-free, uncompressed videos, GPS data for adventure planning, exclusive supporter gifts every year, and so much more. Patrons, we can't thank you enough for what you do to keep this journey going. You folks continue to amaze us with your support and encouragement. Thank you so very much for all that you do. Until next time. Remember, stay curious and leave it better than you found it.